Hi and welcome to the XML Mirror 2.0 video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create parsers and writers using XML Mirror. First step is to browse for the XML file you're going to use. And then click the Start button. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create store procedure, parsers, and writers. So if you select the collection node of store procedures and hit F1, it'll automatically select that. And then F2 for the store procedure node, and that collects all instance nodes. And then the next step is to browse for the DLL we're going to be mapping to, which in this case it's datajuggler.net, which is a part of dbcompare. And I'm going to be selecting the store procedure object. Now notice it fills in the name for you, but if you don't like the name chosen, you're all welcome to change it. And then the next step is fill out the namespace in the output folder. And then click the view button and this will show you all the properties in the DLL we just used using reflection. Now if any properties and nodes have the same name, if you hit the autofill button, it'll fill them in for you. If not, you can drag and drop from the XML tree view above to the bottom one. And hit the and the next step is hit the Build Parser button, and that's how simple it is to create a parser. The next step is to create a writer, so we'll click that radio button. I'm going to just temporarily select a different object and come back, because it will change the name for me without me typing. Okay, if you don't like the name, again, you're welcome to change it. And I'm going to change the name of my namespace in my output folders. And then click the View button again to get rid of the field links. And then that's all, you're all set. All you have to do is click the Build Writer button. And that's how simple it is to create parsers and writers using XML Mirror. Now we're going to close down XML Mirror and I'm going to open Visual Studio and show you what we just created. I did just start using Visual Studio 2017 and I really like it. Alright, so go ahead and open up DB Compare and we'll take a look at what we just created. Alright, so if you look at the parse store procedure method, it'll attempt to write out all the, let me expand this a little bit so you can see it a little better. Okay, it attempts to write out all the values it can automatically. So like the booleans, integers, GUIDs, the standard data types it can parse. Um, the parameters, you have to create your own collection, uh, your own writer, to uh, your own parser, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. And then the next, same with return set schema. I'll show you how to create the, that in the parsed event here in just a second. Now, enumerations, it'll create a little commented out because I didn't want to select what is the default value for enumeration when we attempt to parse it, just in case it doesn't find a match for any reason. So here, I'm going to just be selecting the uh, value of store procedure types dot not set. I didn't want to make any assumptions about what you wanted to use in case it couldn't parse. So you can fill that out. I think that's pretty easy to, you know, so you always want to inspect what was just created. All right, and that's the uh, how to parse an object. The next step I'm going to go ahead and show you is the custom class. This is how you parse the uh, properties that couldn't be mapped automatically. So in the parsed event, here's a few events. that The documentation explains all this a little bit more detail. But in the parsed event, we're going to create two custom parsers. One is for the store procedure parameters, and the other is for the return set schema. So both of these, you know, It'll, all you have to do is create the uh, parser, and then all you do next is pass in the current XML node, and it will parse the uh, child objects for you. So I think that's pretty simple for creating parsers and writers, or for parsers, and I'll show you writers next. Let's go ahead and close down the, uh, let me close all these documents, and I'll show you the parsers. Okay, next I'm going to... Close the parsers folder down and open up the writers folder. And here's the store procedure writer. Now if you compile in some of your objects, it expects you to have the child parameter writers. If you don't have them, all you have to do is go create them using XML mirror and you'll get a build error. So it's real simple to figure out what doesn't automatically export. This is the export list method. All it does is export each individual store procedure and a this all to one very large you know, XML file. There, there's the closing node. That's the uh, export list method. And then the export store procedure. It just, this has all the different values. Here's the param you know, parameters that can be, or the properties that can be automatically parsed. 
And here's you have to create a uh, parameters writer and a return set schema writer. And once you create those, it'll automatically export the uh, child objects that are list T type. So any system collections generic. And you know, in my opinion, this is the best way to handle creating XML file. And the code is C sharp. So if you don't like what was created, you can definitely do your own customizations. But uh, my opinion, this is the best you know XML tool that's ever been created, and I couldn't sell it. So instead of just sitting on my hard drive, I decided to let everybody have it for free, and hopefully you'll like it and tell me what you think about it. And everything compiles, and you're good to go. So that's XML Mirror. I I think it's a really cool program. Um, it's this is the first open source release, so I'm looking for any feedback that you have. Let me know what you think about it. If you have any questions or problems, please leave a message on the uh, XML Mirror website on Codeplex. Thank you very much.